Thanks, Goose. Well, it's been over 20 years since Wolfenstein 3D defined what first-person shooters could be, and that landmark game cemented mechanics that we see in pretty much every shooter today. Since then, though, the series has struggled to remain relevant and never really overtaken its successes. That all changes with Wolfenstein The New Order. Steel. Stone. Concrete for miles. I wonder if there's anything in this world worth saving. It comes down to it. I'll fight alone. But I promise you this. I will find you. Wolfenstein The New Order starts off as a fairly bland and generic shooter. Take out some Nazis, a bunch of turret sections, and some fairly standard grey wartime visuals. Falling through the world in the first mission didn't help either. But then, all of a sudden, that all changes. I started to care about the characters. The gameplay and levels became exciting and varied. And then by the end, I was more than won over. And Hex, to be honest, a little emotional. <laughs> it was a real surprise, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's start with the story. Everything has gone to shit. The Nazi war machine is advancing at an astonishing rate. In an alternate timeline to our own, the Nazis won World War II. They've taken over much of the globe, mostly thanks to their unusual technological advancements. You are once again William Blaskovich, whose face still looks remarkably similar to the little icon we saw on our screens 20 years ago. An attempt to take out the Nazi general, Death's Head, leaves William brain damaged and lost at sea. He's quickly found and sent to an asylum to recover. And it's here where the unexpected character development really begins. Yeah, suddenly you realise these cutscenes have style and Hebrew. purpose and are full of subtle okay. imagery and themes. Count to four. Inhale. Count to four. Exhale. Yeah, and I found those slower story-based areas were full of colour and likeable characters and they were just warm. But when it got to the action, it was always cold, dark, clinical and dangerous. I got the sense that there were some really clever design choices made to encourage you to feel a certain way at a certain moment in the game. Yeah, I literally sat up in my chair in that hospital scene and said, OK, that's pretty cool. Here's what I know. I'm in Poland. A hospital. No, an insane asylum. She's the head nurse. That's her father. Shrink. And her mother. Some type of pharmacist. They run the place, I reckon. Sometimes Christmas, sometimes birthdays, and sometimes Nazis come. And they leave with patients in shackles. What surprised me most was how much I cared about the relationship between Blaskovich and his love interest, Anya. You know, romance is not the kind of thing you normally associate with this kind of action shooter. One more thing. Um, it's quite critical. What? As things progress, you start to understand that she is the only light in his life. She saved him and brought him back to the world. That'll be all. We can go now. They managed to do this in only a handful of cutscenes. The storytelling never overstays its welcome. Yeah, this game knows it's a shooter, but just having that little bit of extra depth in the story is so nice. Mm. Plus, they have a pretty raunchy sex scene. Oh. I want this. With you. This game is also made by new Swedish developer Machine Games, who formed in 2009 with former members of Starbury Studios, known for the Riddick games and also The Darkness. They've done a pretty good job of extrapolating this timeline without getting too silly, which could have been the way that it went. Uh, in English, you can call it... I mean, how's that? Spindly talk. There's little reference to the 2009 Wolfenstein game. This one focuses less on occult and magic and more on raw machinery and science, which I think is a better fit for the series. The Nazi technology is really interesting, both just to look at and fight against. Yeah, and the villains are terrifying, aren't they? And brutal. The Nazi oppression takes many forms. It's often violent and always hurts the innocent. They don't pull their punches, do they? No, and a bit of a gore warning here. There's a lot of giblets in this game and a lot of stabbing. 
dogs, Nazis, everyone is up for stabs. And when those dogs come at you, it's full on. Yeah, all that close quarters stuff is really intense and especially stressful when you get involved in one of those stab tussles. This is a violent shooter, and if you're not into that, then this will shock you more than once. But at the same time, there's also a contrast because there is a dark sense of humour to the game as well. This is a small criticism because it really is only in two or three instances, but I do feel like some of the stabs were a bit gratuitous. Yeah, but I don't think it glorifies the mechanic or the action, though. In fact, I thought they worked really hard to make this melee work better than most other shooters, where it usually just feels a bit tacked on and clumsy. Yeah, but I think there's a way to keep that impact there without having the character revel in the gore of it so much. But yes, the mechanic itself does work well, especially when stealthing and trying to hunt down and take out guards who will set off alarms. There's good challenge in the fights, and quite often you'll be presented with a scenario that'll make you stop and think, how will I get through this? I thought everything about the gunplay was really polished. Yeah, at first I was a little bit disappointed with the relatively small variety of weapons. And in fairness, there isn't a whole lot new to talk about when it comes to gunplay. But I like that the upgrades really do mix things up and they aren't handed to you. You have to seek them out, which encourages exploration. Plus, weapons all have alternate fires as well. But best of all, you can dual wield everything. Yes. Shotguns, pistols, laser rifles, even knives and sniper rifles can be held in two hands. Double shotguns is pure destruction, isn't it, Bajo? Especially with the flak upgrade. But best of all, it all feels really balanced. If you dual wield, you move much slower and you can't aim down sights. So it's good if you're taking out tough enemies or going on a rampage, but not so useful if you're picking your way carefully around a map. There's also a cutting tool called the laser craft work. This lets you find alternate routes and hidden pickups. It can be a little bit fiddly to use, but it also doubles as a giblet making railgun. This game likes to stick to its old school roots a little. Ammo, health packs and armour are sprinkled all over the place. In the past text I might have said that is a little bit of lazy game design, but I actually liked it here. It worked really well. I felt like after each fight I was gearing up and patching up ready to move on to the next one. I'm also glad you only get partial health regeneration too. You can't just sit in a corner and suck your thumb and regenerate completely. You just have to do a bit better or maybe take a few risks. Yeah, it works well. And if you pick up extra med packs, you enter overcharge. It'll tack that onto your current health and start ticking back down. It's great because it encourages you to go on a hero's rampage, but it also helps when facing tough foes. I also thought it was a nice touch that you can pick off armor that you've shot off enemies and add that to your own especially off the giant mechs and robots, and those fights were, I think, my favourite. We played this on PS4, and the controls are very polished too. The kickback of weapons, the character movement, it all still has that old-school feel, but totally modern at the same time. I'm also impressed in how far shooter controls have come. Normally I'm a bit of a mouse and keyboard snob when it comes to FPS, but after 10 minutes with this controller, I even forgot I was using it. I also like the level design. Yes, I love that it's not completely linear. Along with all the upgrades and gold to find about the place, you're often presented with more than one path, but it feels reasonably organic within the level rather than just, here's a vent, here's a door. It's pretty rare that I got lost. Yeah, and they do a good job of seeding excitement for future missions as well. Hex, it's not often that I actually want to get to the end of an FPS single player campaign other than just for the sake of it, but with this one, I needed to see it through. I wanted to help this ragtag team of resistant fighters achieve their objective. And you don't get the sense that this is the final battle either. You're on a mission to merely dent the Nazi machine, and it's not going to be easy, and not everyone is going to make it through. Someone needs to go in there and find him. Go undercover. <laughs> Any volunteers? By the end, I was so impressed with how slowly they reveal all the team's personalities to you. They're not just blank character models in a room, they all have stories and care about things within the limitations of a shooter. I'm sorry about your legs. Don't be. I've learned how to fly. I was so moved by some moments, Hex, and by the end, I was even a little bit emotional. From a Wolfenstein game, I even had to put the controller down and tip my hat and say, well played game. Yeah, it feels weird, doesn't it? But at the same time, I really hope more shooters take this kind of care with their story. Yeah, me too. There's no multiplayer component to this game, but I think we're actually kind of glad about that. Yeah, I'd much rather have a strong single player campaign that I actually want to finish than some tacked on multiplayer. There isn't a whole lot to criticize about this game. It doesn't reinvent the genre, but it's not trying to. There are times when the enemies are intelligent and formidable, but there are also some rough animations and questionable AI moments. 
You know, like when enemies do that sidestep walk towards you. Yeah, it's kind of like their top half is running independent from their bottom half. <laughs> but overall, I thought this was a really solid game, so I'm giving it eight and a half. Yeah, it's not revolutionary, but in a way I found it revitalising. The New Order does what so many shooters should be doing. I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. Hey, darling. How about we go for a spin? Okay. Back to work.